Hey guys, my name is Tony Camel and today I'm testing the Inches 3D and ZBrush Core. So first of all I wanted to show you how I usually create a base mesh using the 3D primitives which are also available in ZBrush Core. There are other methods to create a base mesh. Um, if you don't want to use the 3D primitives you can also use the C spheres or you use a 3D uh, sphere to carve out the shape you're looking for and in this case it's obviously a big cat. Okay, uh, now I wanted to talk a little bit more about the inches and ZBrush core. The actual drawing area on the inches 3D feels more rough in comparison to the inches pro which feels more sleek to me. And if you can see in the video the inches 3D pen fits nicely into the hand and is um, of course lighter than the Pro Pen. And in the beginning I had some trouble installing ZBrush Core but after checking the manual guide I knew what to do. First I had to register uh, the Inches 3D on the Wacom homepage and after that I was able to download ZBrush Core by using the software download bundle key I found on the boxing. And of course after that it was easy to install and register ZBrush Core on my PC. And about the software itself, it's a lighter version of ZBrush and comes with all the necessary functions and tools uh, you need if you want to learn 3D. First and foremost it's created to help beginners step into the 3D world. And what I quickly realized uh, was uh, some missing functions like the mirror and weld, the zero measure function or even brushes like uh, the snake hook or the curved tube brush just to name a few. Okay, uh, I would say let's talk about my process on creating the Roman things. As you seen before I used a, a base mesh created out of 3D primitives and I merged them all together into one single subtool to pose the character easily uh, using the transpose tools like move, rotate and uh, scale. Uh, ZBrush Core also doesn't come with the, with the transpose mesh tool so I had to use this method to get a dynamic pose for my character. One of the new functions inside uh, ZBrush Core is the uh, Gizmo 3D tool, which helps you transform your models with a few mouse clicks. ZBrush Core handles also 3D objects up to uh, 20 million polygons. And about the uh, rendering process, I use the ZBrush to Keyshot Bridge tool, which uh, ZBrush Core also supports. And that's really cool. And yeah. Back to the sculpting. After I turned on uh, Dynamesh, I started sculpting the muscles of the cat and the human body. For sculpting, I only use clay tube brush and the move brush. And what I realized um, is that the edges of the clay tube brush on ZBrush Core are more smooth and let's say less sharp than the same brush inside ZBrush for R7. And about the sculpting process, uh, the key is to blend uh, the human body seamlessly into the cat's body. And to do so, it definitely helps to know your anatomy of both uh, the human um, and the uh, cat body and <laughs> of course having lots of reference images uh, on your second screen is is definitely helpful for sculpting realistic um, fantasy creatures like this one. <laughs> uh, I also sped up the video up to six times faster so you don't get bored watching me sculpting the Roman things which took me a few hours to complete. Uh, yeah, to define and separate each muscle group, I'm also using uh, the, the damn standard brush from time to time. 
to pro to cut in uh, to cut in sharp edges and separate uh, each muscle group from uh, from another to help the viewer see uh, the muscles clearly. And what I can say so far about the ZBrush Core is it's a great tool for beginners to learn more about 3D and I had so much fun sculpting the Roman things and <laughs> I wish I had it back then I learned 3D and yeah some more details about ZBrush Core you can um, export and import OBJ files as well as STL files if you uh, want to take your model to, model to the next step and 3D print it. Also one cool thing to talk about are the language localization inside ZBrush Core. You can choose between uh, English, German, French, uh, Spanish, Japanese and even simplified Chinese which is really cool. And things you can't use inside ZBrush Core are for example the uh, C-Modeler, <coughs> C-Sketch and uh, the Shadow Box as well as the Fiber Mesh Generation and tools like Nano Mesh and Array Mesh. But of course for the Roman Things uh, model I am mainly focusing on sculpting and extracting meshes like the helmet, uh, the shield and the body armor uh, you will see later on in the video. Yeah, and ZBrush Core supports also any kind of graphic tablets which is of course helpful <laughs> and uh, is also available on Windows and Mac. And another cool thing to talk about is the ZBrush Core playlist available on the Pixelogix YouTube channel which helps you with uh, tips and tricks and awesome tu tutorials on how to sculpt and use certain uh, tools and function in functions inside ZBrush Core. It's definitely um, worth to check that out. And yeah, continuing sculpting the muscles, uh, muscle parts of the big cat. After I finished laying in the main muscle groups, I increased the DynaMesh resolution and started refining all the muscles on the Roman things. The next step will be um, to create the helmet and the shield and the weapon for the Roman things. As you can see here, I'm using a standard T-Pose mesh uh, imported from Desk Studio, subdivided it a few times to get some clean masking and started creating the helmet using the extract tools. Um, in this video I'm uh, only showing you how to uh, create the helmet for the Roman things and yeah, the rest of the tools I created for the model um, will be maybe uh, available on my YouTube channel later on. I'm thinking about um, uploading the full real-time video to my YouTube channel, but for now let's focus, focus on the uh, time-lapse video here. Um, to speed up the video, as I uh, mentioned before, um, I only create the helmet of the fit for the th uh, things. And uh, this method you you see right now um, can be also applied to create the shield and the weapon as well as the clothing. Yeah, masking out some areas on the helmet. And very important, having fun sculpting.
I'm also using um, a lot of reference images about a Roman helmet to create an accurate and uh, believable tool for the uh, Sphinx model. Looks great so far. Getting uh, creating some more details for the helmet. Yeah. So now it's time to merge them all together and here I'm using the gizmo tool as well as the transformation tools uh, to place the helmet on the actual Sphinx model and trying to match it using rotate, scale and move tools Awesome. Look cool so far. <laughs> so this was this was the testing of the Vacuum Inches 3D and ZBrush Core. Um, I hope you liked it and uh, you learned something new about a ZBrush Core. Thanks for watching. Bye.